the same technical issue this evening. So we do apologize for that. Callum is with us now. We're going to use Callum today for tomorrow. So the first 10 to 15 minutes is going to be live for you straight away. And then everything after that will be embargoed till 11 o'clock tonight. So to get us going, Guy, would you like to kick us off, please? Yeah, sure. How many questions uh, do you want us to ask? You're pretty good, good guy, just to give everyone a chance, please. Okay. Hi, Callum. Good to see you. Um, can you just tell us what... Can you hear me okay, Callum? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Can you just tell us what today was like in terms of players arriving from yesterday, maybe, who played yesterday, whether it was a full training session or how many bodies down were you? Um, yeah, so obviously it's a little bit different because there was a lot of uh, club games. Um which were played yesterday, and normally, obviously, we play on a Saturday, so um, it was obviously a little bit more trickier um, because a few lads had to do recovery, like myself, um, and then a few lads uh, game minus two, so they got to train in a little bit, and the lads that haven't really been playing so much um, got to have a full session. So we was obviously all a little bit separated today, but we'll be all uh, back to back to normal tomorrow as a, as a full group. In terms of the, the two previous internationals, there was sort of everybody seemed to be at sort of 75% because it was pre-season. What, what can you have learned there that, that may help you on Thursday, bearing in mind you're not going to have too much time uh, in terms of preparation and training? Yeah, of course, it's, it's annoying a little bit because we would have liked a little bit longer going into the big game on Thursday. But um, obviously the, fir the first two uh, fixtures that we had last month um, were obviously um, hard harder for us because we didn't have um, a long pre-season anyway and then you're getting chucked into two uh, big games, uh, big Nation League games. So, um, yeah, it's obviously been a little bit tricky over the last few months, but um, the only good thing now this month that we're all going to be um, a lot more fitter um, with the games that we're playing and the majority of the lads in the squad are playing week in, week out, which is good. So, sharpness-wise and fitness-wise, we're, we're all in a good place. Yeah, especially you, you're doing really well with, with West Brom at the moment, scoring goals and, and starting. Do you feel you're in a much better position now to push the manager for, for a starting berth on Thursday? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, um, because you're with your club more than you are for the international games, you've got to do well for your club to first of all get selected and then to try and get into the starting eleven. And I've just been enjoying my time at the moment with, um, with West Brom. Uh, um, obviously, uh, started the the first four games of the season and was involved in one of the cup games and got myself a few goals. So, um, yeah, I'm obviously positive going into the game, but I've just got to obviously wait on the, the gaffer's um, selection. But um, I'm just going to keep working hard and try to do well in training in the next few days and, and see how it goes. Cheers, Callum. Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. OK, Sinead, would you like to come in? Yeah, Callum, um, as you said there, do you expect, have you been given any indication at all whether you'll start uh, this week? No, no, I've had, I've had nothing uh, so far. Um, obviously, as I said, um, it's, been, it's been tricky this week, um, well, today, sorry, um, with lads having to do a little bit of recovery, and, uh, but we're all back together tomorrow. But um, yeah, we'll just, just wait and see. Um, obviously, any player would want to be starting in, in games like Thursday night, it's obviously a massive game, but um, it's down to the gaffer for his, who he's going to pick for, for the game. Do you expect you to be more cohesive on Thursday? You know, everyone on the same page for this huge game? Yeah, of course. Um, as I said, lads are club-wise, lads have been playing and we're, we're, we're all in a good place. Um, and then we're going to have to try get, well, the, the, the coaching staff and the manager is going to have to try get as much um, information across to us in, in a short period of time, which is obviously hard, but um, it was good to be away with him uh, last month. So we sort of know the, the basics of how he wants to obviously approach games. Um, so as I said, the next few days are going to be key to, to what we want to, what we want to end up doing in, uh, on Thursday night. Do you go there with confidence, with no fear? Yeah, no fear. I, I, well, personally, I never, I never fear for anyone really and I think we're like that as a group um, we've got we know that we've got a lot of quality and you could see obviously it was disappointing to, to lose against Finland but you could see little little things as um, in the game where we're trying to get to where we want what what the manager wants we're, we're, we're getting there but it was obviously harder last month because we wasn't as fit as we are now so 
um, yeah, I've, I'm really positive, obviously, going into Thursday, and I'll back all the lads and, and everyone who's involved here. Good luck, thanks. thanks Thank you. Just you. Yes. a couple of people in, if that's okay. So yeah. Nathan, are you next? Yeah, can you hear me there? Yeah. Will I go? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Callum. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, you touched there on fitness uh, last time out, and it was maybe a bit of a surprise to everybody that for pre-season playing internationals of, of importance. Just how far off it were you, do you think, in September of full fitness compared to where you are a month on? Uh, well, I can't speak, obviously, for everyone, but I would definitely say I was probably 75% out of 100. It was, it's tough because you've... You've had you have a few preseason games, but they're not the same. And as I said, it was a short preseason anyway. I think it was two and a half weeks, three weeks, and we was having two massive games like that. And it, it's tough. And then obviously you've got the new information from the new manager um, to take on board as well, uh, which is tough. There obviously, no excuses, but you could see what what he wanted from the way we played. But just that extra. 15, 20% is going to obviously take us a long way. All the players we've spoken to over the last while talk about the amount of information. Has that kept going over the last few weeks? Has the manager been in touch when you've been back with your clubs? Um, yeah, obviously he tries to get in touch, but it's, it's tough for him because we're, we're with our clubs and we're, we're doing what we're doing week in, week out. Um, so it's more when we get here where he can obviously get more information across as a collective instead of individuals because it's, it would be tough to to be ringing every player um, throughout every week. Every week, it'd be, it'd be tough to obviously get the information. So it's obviously easier when you've got the group of lads in front of you to, to help us. It's easier to get the information across. I'm sure you'd say you'd play anywhere, but if it is the 4-3-3 formation, again, across that front three, what do you think is your, your best position? What's your preferred spot? Um, obviously, I've, I've played in every every one of them positions in my, my career so far. So I had obviously, for, for Preston North End, I played a lot on the left. Um, and then for Ireland, I've played a lot on the right. Um, and then obviously this season, West Brom last season, I was on the left and, and right. Um, and then this season, I've been playing through the middle uh, for, the, for the first four games of the season. So um, that's the obviously good thing about myself. I, I enjoy playing in any of them positions and, I enjoy just being in the final third and, and trying to be a threat from from any right, left or up front. So it's um it's been obviously it's good for me because it helps me get in uh get into the squads and hopefully I can, as I say, push for that starting spot starting spot. Just one last one. Uh, Cyrus Christie's been called back into the squad in place of Seamus Coleman. He was talking over the last few weeks about some of the issues he'd had with racism when he was in with Ireland. Uh, some of the quotes he said were, Cyrus, you're not Irish, you were born in England. And he didn't think that the likes of Richard Kyo, Harry Arthur, Kieran Clark were getting those sort of comments. He said, but me, David McGoldrick, Callum Robinson, the three black lads that's coming at us, we're the ones that are getting spoken about like that. Have you had any experiences like that, like Cyrus talks about, when you've been in with Ireland? Um, not so much. Um, I haven't had, had a lot. I think, I think when I was at Preston, I had a at my present time, but when I first sort of joined the squad, I had a few tweets and stuff like that, but I haven't had nothing to face to face or heard anything from, from anyone from the fans or crowd wise. And with Twitter, as you, as you know, you, you never get a face on the other side of it. So, and obviously we got them tweets deleted because we want that kicked out. We, we don't want any of that. Um, and we're obviously playing for the country because we've got Irish in us, so it, it, that doesn't make sense at all, um, or we wouldn't be playing for the country. And we still put in 100 and 110%, it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, obviously that's disappointing if, if Sai's had that. Um, I've had a little bit of it, but maybe not as much as, as him, or I'm, I'm not sure about Didsy. Um, but in general, we're, we're trying, to, trying to kick that out. And as you can see, with uh, football in England, in the Prem, and and in the championship and all, all the leagues, we're, we're really trying to push this because it's obviously disappointing what, what, what's been going on around the world. And, and football is obviously one of the main sports and we're, we're trying to push that in general. So, yeah, obviously it's not nice that size had to experience that. But um, 
mine with me i've only had a few tweets and as you said you don't know who's on the end of them do you think it's working do you think taking a knee for the 10 seconds at the start of a game is is having an impact well of course because it's every game everyone's watching the fo- everyone's watching the games and um as i said it's it's viewed all around the world and and we're we're making a stand and hopefully even if it's one percent two percent of of even kids growing up like asking the question why are they kneeling on why why they why are they doing that um and then the parent can answer it and just little things there's there's so much to it but i think obviously definitely then one two percent is always going to help um this situation thanks Carl. Uh, thank, thank you, you Nathan. Adrian Eames, would you like to ask a question? How are you doing, Callum? Um, I spoke yesterday about um, Ireland's approach, and he said they won't, you know, that the team won't be cautious. In terms of, it's a one-off game, and they said like uh, it's a cup semi-final to make a final with a big prize at stake. So, how do you think you'll approach the game in terms? Because he mentioned as well that Slovakia are a possession-based team, so. How important would it be to try and get on the front foot and dictate things on Thursday? Well, of course, that's, the, that's down to the manager, um, not, not Callum Robinson. But uh, I, think, um, I think since the, obviously we've only had one trip with a new manager, but he's been, he's been really positive with us. And as you can see in the games, the way that we was pressing and the way we were trying to go at it. We wasn't sitting off at times in the game. You have to sit off. There's, there's quality in international football and you can get punished if you're all over the place. But you can see that we're, we're being positive and we're, we're trying to force the issue. And I'd assume we're, we're going to obviously go there positive and, and try to attack them and, and, um, and to stop them playing and disrupt them. But as I said, I, I'm not the manager and we haven't really had that sit down yet um, or a meeting. Uh, about what what's going on because it's obviously been lads have been coming in um, as I said the likes of Connor come this morning and and Doc's come this morning so that we haven't had that um, group meeting yet but obviously it's down to the manager what he wants to do and how he wants to to go uh, to go there and, and to try get a win is what we're obviously going to try do and I, I'd assume it's going to be to um, try force the issue. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. No, you're all good. Okay. Wait, um, Damien Spellman. Hey, Callum. Hello, you okay? Yeah, good, thanks, good, thanks. Um, Callum, does the fact that you are uh, playing regularly in the Premier League, you're scoring goals, particularly against Chelsea, do you think you've given the manager something to think about for this week? Well, you hope so as a, as a professional footballer um, and as an, as an attacker, um, scoring goals and assists and but obviously first of all playing getting games and starting and getting minutes. Um, hopefully, I'll, I'm, I've been doing well in club level, as I said, first of all, to get selected, but then to, to obviously get a start in, um, to get in the starting lineup. I've been obviously working hard club uh, club level to try to get that start, in, that, that start here. Um, and obviously, fingers crossed that can happen. Um, and we just got to wait and see and see what the manager wants to go for. Um, on Thursday night, but I've, I've done the best I can and hopefully in the next few days I can keep training and working hard to, to try and push, push to get that start. And just obviously ordinarily this game would be played in front of a really hostile crowd in Slovakia, no crowd there. Um, from your experience in the Premier League, how much difference has that made, how difference has that made playing behind closed doors? Um, yeah, there can be differences in, in different games. Um, so, for instance, that, that Chelsea game, they, they come back into it um, and obviously got the three goals. But you could say if there was fans uh, roaring us on and to keep, to, keep, to keep them out, that could have happened and we could have maybe got a win. Um, is obviously our, That's the main thing that I miss, miss the most. I miss the fans at, at games and especially games like Thursday night. It would have been, it would have been going off. So, yeah, it's, it's obviously disappointed. Missed them loads and probably took them for granted a little bit um, because now for the first time ever that we've had to play without fans, you really do miss them. So, yeah, it's going to be obviously different on Thursday night without, without our fans there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Roland Murphy. 
Yeah, so you spoke a lot earlier about fitness and your fitness being lacking earlier in, in the previous matches. Do you think as well as being fitter, you'll also be mentally sharper for these games, having yeah. played a few games over the last month? Yeah, of course, the fitter you are, the, the sharper you are. And, and uh, that's just, that, yeah, that's just common sense. That's just as in, if you're fitter, you don't have to worry about your legs, like, blowing up early or whatever. You, you, you're sharper in your mind, your touches, your your awareness, everything it takes, it takes long. And that's why normally you have a six, seven week period uh, to get to that point. And as I said, we only had three weeks, I think it was, or two and a half, three weeks to get to that point. And then you're playing against um, teams that their leagues have started as well. Also, their, their leagues were started um, before us. So they would have been up to a little bit more speed than us. So yeah, it's obviously difficult um, doing it, but we had to do it. It is what it is. And uh Thought the boys still done. We done well, um, but as I said, the way the manager wants to play, you, you need that extra fifteen, twenty percent. You need to be a bit more fitter than we were um, with the press, etc. But that's why I'm hoping, obviously, this, this, um, these, these next three fixtures. But obviously, Thursday night uh, we'll be fitter and we'll be obviously more on the ball and sharper um, around the box and and in our own box as well. Thank you, Ronald. Gavin Cooney? Hey, Callum. Yeah, just to really follow on from something Damien was asking for, uh, asking about, from your own performance point of view, what's the most difficult aspect of playing in an empty stadium? Yeah, the difficult is probably when you score against Chelsea and, and there's no one there to, um, there's, there's no one there to celebrate with, just, just the camera. So uh, that's the difficult part of it. Um, and as I said, for for West Brom, we're obviously back in back in the Premiership, and the fans would be um, would be would be roaring us on and and celebrating goals etc. and and helping us along the way, which isn't happening at the moment. Um, obviously, we're celebrating with just our teammates, but as I said you take the the fans for granted um, when you when you're scoring goals or you you get in the draw against Chelsea at the Hawthorns, it would have been a it would have been obviously nights to remember. And but at the moment, there's 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 nothing. Aston Villa last night beat Liverpool seven two. Villa Park, as as I was there before, that would have been that would have been going off for for hours. Um, but obviously, it's just sad that 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 isn't happening at the moment through through these circumstances. But we have to just obviously keep playing and keep working hard through this through these times. Yeah, obviously the circumstances around the world are very difficult for everyone and. Obviously, the virus is still out there. Um, now you're leaving what is a quite a controlled, like health-wise Premier League environment, and I'm not at all questioning your commitment to Ireland. You're clearly committed to international football, but are, did it give you pause for thought at all? Are you anxious at all about leaving your club and then getting on a flight to England and then or flight to Ireland and then you're going to play in Slovakia, then in Ireland, then in Finland, then back to England? Like it's an awful lot of travel, like. I think you'd probably be human if you weren't. If you wouldn't be human if you weren't a little bit anxious about that. Yeah, I think everyone's obviously a little bit anxious about um, obviously catching it, which is un understandable. But at the end of the day, this is our job, um, and then and then the, the you're playing playing for your country. At the end of the day, there's no way I'm not catching a flight over to Ireland and catching a flight to Slovakia and back and to Finland and. No chance. I'm I'm missing that. Obviously, you do. You are anxious because it is crazy what's going on um, in the world right now. But at the end of the day, it's our job, and and we want to play for our country. It's simple as that. Mm, and you're probably aware. I doubt even the manager has to say it that you can cheer up a full country with your result on Thursday night. Yeah, of course. Through these sad times at the moment, um, as I said, I think I would say in general, football in general has been obviously keeping people healthy and you, you, you think you laugh and you think that no chance but I, I know that football is definitely helping people's um, people's heads um, at the moment obviously being at home a lot um, and watching the games etc um, obviously gives keep, gives them a motive to be happy so um, yeah obviously a, a lot's on Thursday night and if we can we can get a win to put some smile smiles again on people's faces and as you know winter's coming as well so that's just a little bit of a downer with the obviously with the virus so football is obviously a massive thing and, and if we can get that win for the country um on on Thursday night that would be that would be massive. 
Thanks a lot, Callum. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gavin. We're going to go to the embargo now. So everything from here on in is embargoed until 11 o'clock this evening. That's roughly four hours from now. So we'll start with Owen Cowes, Owen. Uh, hey, Callum. Hello. Can we, can we just ask you, Owen, do you remember watching the playoffs against Denmark in 2017 or Bosnia in 2015 or any of those beforehand? Yeah, yeah. I remember I, I was... Um, Actually, funny enough, I remember I was watching it in, in Preston, um, and I think this might have been the was it twenty? I think it was Denmark game. Yeah, it was. And uh, I think I, I remember thinking, I want to, I want to be involved, man. I want to be the like them games, and especially. And look, it goes back to the fans. I remember seeing the fans and and stuff like that, and I just wanted to to be involved and and play. So yeah, I do, I do remember and. I said now to be sitting here involved with the squad and and the likes of Jimmy and 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 Shane Long and and the experienced boys and and being a part of it now is obviously it's obviously amazing for for me and my family. Yeah, was that the nil all draw or the five one? You remember the the nil nil draw. So I remember um, and as I said, like you just want to be involved in in the in them games and. It's just a. It's just obviously a privilege to be a, a part of it now, and and we want to. There's a lot of young lads now in the, in the squad, and um, and we want to make we want to make history. We want to do well, and we want to obviously get to the Euros. This is what you you dream about as a kid. These games like Thursday night to to help the country get to to Euros, and and fingers crossed that we can do that. And I, I believe that we can uh, with the squad that we've got. It's going to be tough, but you're never going to get to a Euros um, an easy way. So. Does it feel weird? Like it's been eleven months we've been talking about this game now, given that it was November when we knew we were going into this playoff. Like, does it feel like it's been taking this long, or is it just events in the world overtook it, so you were able to park it for so long? Uh, a little bit, yeah. It does feel. It feels like a long wait, but I think since we've been back, like so, when we was obviously on lockdown, etc., and you're looking at the dates and you in your house um, not being able to do much and you gutted that the games weren't played in, in March and you're thinking this we could have been we could have been playing these games we could be on our way to the Euros now but um, since we've obviously been back into football it's just been week after week really um, so you're not thinking too much into it but as I said now it's come round and I think I speak for all the boys I think we're all looking forward to it there's, as I said there's nothing to fear I think we've got a lot of quality and We've got, a, a, as I said, some of the young lads have come in and done really well, and so the, the, there's not there's not so much fear fear there. I think we've we've got a lot of quality, so we can go there positive and, and hopefully get what we want to get go there and get what we want to get and get the win, and and then we move on to to next month. All right, thanks a lot. Well, Thank uh, you. Kenny, Hi, Callum. How are you? Hello. Are you okay? Uh, tipping along. Um, there's been an increased amount of goals in pretty much every league across the country since they've been playing behind closed doors. Do you expect that to translate to internationals, especially considering that squads only have one or two training sessions together? Um, potentially. I don't know if that the goals, it's just a cliche because it's um, because there's no fans, etc. You could say because without knowing as a footballer, you might be five percent off because they give you well you could be 100 percent, but the fans give you 105 percent, 110 percent to keep that ball out your net or you, you you never know but i think with international football i always find that it's, it's a little bit different and um, it's a little bit more tactical um and there's a lot more quality so you know it, you've got to make it hard to break to break to break us down because we know the quality that slovakia have or any other country would have so um I think it will be a lot different and not so many goals because I do think people really try and make it hard to, to break it down because it's more tactical. Perfect. And I'm now please correct me if I'm wrong, but after 120 minutes, if it's still a draw, it goes to penalties. Has anyone kind of mentioned it yet or have you decided whether or thought about whether you step up to take one if the situation arose? Yeah, so obviously the gaffer just... Like as I said, he's he's said about it already. Um, that's gonna that could be a big part of of um, of Thursday night is is penalties. So I'd assume over the next few the next few days we'll be definitely uh, practicing uh, penalties, um, which is a no brainer really because that could be a huge part of um, Thursday night. And yeah, I'm I'm easy to to take a to take a penalty. Um, 
it doesn't really it doesn't bother me too much obviously there's always a little bit of pressure there and definitely on Thursday night it would be a lot of pressure but um, I wouldn't be um, saying no to taking one um, definitely not thanks very much Mick Scully hi Callum how are you hello what does scoring two goals against Chelsea do for you and your, and your confidence has, has, you know, did it make have an effect on you uh, definitely I think scoring goals for any forward is you, you're confident um, your confidence does you have more confidence because you're scoring at Premiership's one of the best leagues in the world, so to be scored, and then Chelsea's one of the, the best teams in the world. So to obviously score two against uh, Chelsea was obviously a great feeling, and it's it's nice to score two at that level as well. Obviously, I scored a lot of goals in the Championship, um, and I did score one for Sheffield United in the Prem. But um, I think there was obviously a little bit of doubt um, to to know if I could score at that level, and I've always believed that I can I can definitely score at that level or and get assists at this level and, and now it's, it's just nice to be proving um, people wrong. And like Stephen Kenny had, has said in the last while that, you know, you've kind of turned his head in terms of maybe playing in that position. Um, you, you obviously feel, I know you said earlier about that you're versatile, but you feel you can you could play in that central role in the, in the three. So it's just one, one out of time. Sorry. We've only got 10 minutes left. Yeah, um, yeah, so obviously, as I said before, I've, I've played right um, right foot for Ireland. I've played left foot for Ireland. I've had a little 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes here at, at front as well. Um, obviously, at the moment, I've been playing as a number nine, um, been enjoying it. Um, and it's, it's a little bit, obviously, you don't get as many touches, etc. But that's at, that's at West Brom. But I've been I've been enjoying it, and you you're in the box, you're in the final third. But as I said, I think anywhere across that front three, I I, I really enjoy it, and I still get in the same sort of areas. Um, anyway, really, I'm I'm always in the box, um, and the way obviously the last two games, um, the two wide man uh, can be narrow or wide, so it's not like I'll I'm, I'll be really wide if I did play on the wing here, so. Yeah, it's just obviously it's another option for the for the manager to to think about, but I'd I'd, I'd play anywhere. Thanks. Thank you, Mark McCann. Hey, Colin. Um, sorry, Mick kind of uh, robbed me a question there. Now it was it was regarding Stephen Kenny's comments about you. Did you hear or read them? Uh, I seen a comment on Twitter about it. Um, someone commented, and I seen it on Twitter, but. Um, as I said, it's it's obviously nice to him to know that there's another option there if needed. Um, I've been playing obviously up there in, as I said, in the Premiership, which is 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 a top league, and to be running the line up there to be at the top the top of the pitch um, in a in a in a top league like that is obviously it's it's food for thought for for the manager. Um, but um he knows me and I know him from the last camp and he knows that I can play in, in any of the three anyway, but it's probably just a little bit more of an eye opener that I've I've played up there and I've scored a few goals up there as well, which is which is always good for, for player and, and manager. Yeah, so I mean you we, we haven't kind of been scoring a huge amount of goals over the last year and a half. Would you be kind of uh happy to take on that burden as the kind of main striker and and try be the one to fire us to Victory on Thursday. Yeah, well, if if <laughs> I'd, I'd definitely say yeah. Obviously, uh, every attacker here is going to say that, that they want to be the one scoring goals. Or but at, when it gets to these nights on Thursday nights, I'd take <laughs> one off the shin off a defender. To be honest, it don't matter who, how it gets over the line. But yeah, I'd, I'd obviously you you want to score goals. You want to you want to be scoring goals for the country, and and that's what I'd obviously aim to. Uh, I'd aim to do that, and and yeah, it wouldn't be wanting to be the main man, but I'd happy to. I'll be happy to score goals and and important goals to help the team get the result. Cheers, thanks. Thank you. Okay, and just to wrap up, then Daniel McDonald. Uh, thanks, Carl. Uh, hi, Callum. Um, Callum, uh, sorry, unless I'm corrected here, I think VAR is in use uh, on on Thursday in Slovakia, which is the first time it's been used for an Ireland game. Um, you're well used to it, I guess, at this stage, but. I just wonder, as a forward player, has it changed your 
you know, your, your movements in any way, your mentality in a game that, you know, you're judging offside runs or whatever it might be. Like, has it affected your, your mindset on the pitch? Um, I wouldn't say it's affected it, um, but it does make you think like you, you need to think about your movement a little bit more and timing it because there's nothing worse than scoring and it gets rules that ruled out when you could be onside and you've just been a little bit lazy with your movement um, to, to not get back onside before you make the run. So, yeah, you, you could say that you, you think a little bit more, but I think as the game's be, when you're playing the game, um, you should always be thinking about your movement and timing it right anyway. And, and uh, if, if it, obviously, if you are offside, it should just be unlucky then mm. instead of a bit of laziness. So, yeah, obviously, VAR's um, going to be in for, for, this, for this fixture and... Um, but a lot of the boys now are, are playing premiership in in the in the dressing room here now, so uh, we're more than um, used to it. But just with all these interpretations of the handball rule, there's no temptation to just start hammering the ball in a in a direction of the arm in the box and and take it to the, the, the most cynical level. Yeah, obviously, I think uh, was it Docs the other week? I think the same one with Docs. Mm. Yes, some of them have been um, unbelievable, to be fair. Some have been um, a shambles, but some have been right. And it's obviously, it's just, it's all up in the air, obviously. But they've got a job and, and VAR, you have to obviously follow what they say and, and hope that they're right. Um, and some goals have been given, which shouldn't have really, and, and vice versa. So it is what it is. And, and that's the game now. And we've just got to trust in it. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you very much. Unless there's a last question from anyone? All happy? Okay, thank you very much. We will send around the, the video uh, to everybody who's on the call this evening and just ask you again just to respect the embargo uh, from 11 o'clock tonight as the embargo comes. So, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Callum. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Callum. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Oh, good, yeah.